Boss Man Show. It's the time of the show. We go talk to my man in Memphis, J.C. Smith, the man that clicks sports bar and billiards every Saturday night for you, giving you the karaoke of all time, City of Memphis, I don't Malco away. J.C., what's good, bro? The boss. What's going on, bro? Man, Bray, I'm in Joint Super Bowl weekend in Atlanta, man. All the fine honeys are down there, and the wagons are out in full force. I mean, all the all the thoughts are out here, man. All the gold diggers, but they all want one thing. They want some of the pipe, bro. <laughs> we not going to vote down. <laughs> hey, man, God bless them, man. God love Super Bowl week, man. Yes, indeed. Well, bro, the big game is coming up. So I want to get you a breakdown of the big game. Got the Rams playing the Patriots. And before we get into that, I want your take on the call. Got the Rams in the the Super Bowl. What is your take on that call? And the Saints fans are whining. What's your whole opinion about the whole scenario? I mean, you know, know, when it first happened, you know, initial reaction, I was was amongst, you know, everybody chiming in on it and thinking that the Rams, uh, the, the Saints got robbed and everything, man. But, you know, after, you know, it kind of settled down and you go back and look at it, and even during that game, you know, the Saints benefited from, from uh, some bad calls as well. And, and on, that, on that particular play in question, you know, when you, when you go back and look at it, when you rewind the tape, uh, the Saints got away with a couple things on that play as well. Got away with a face mask, uh, the offensive lineman committee, got away with a holding, uh, the one the lineman committee. And then if you look closely, uh, it, lo- it looks like the ball was tipped. Uh, as well by one of the Rams uh, defensive line. So, you know, technically, should should, have, should the, uh, the flag have been thrown? Yes. Yeah. But when you go back and look at it, you know, it kind of makes you feel feel a little better about it. After You know, looking back on it now, as opposed to when it initially happened, thinking that it's a bad problem, man. But they really didn't, you know. They still, you know, missed out on plays and didn't make the plays necessary to win. So, you know, the Rams, you know, they, they – they they're here because they're supposed to be here, man. You got that right. And uh, do you feel like the NFL should let passing friends become reviewable now or no? I wouldn't. I wouldn't because you know don't let the outcry over there one you know one bad call you know uh, maybe slow down the game even further. You know the next time to where they do go and review it and you know then to open up. I think to open up Pandora's box. Okay, so we're gonna review past the parents, then we need to go we need to review hope. You know what I'm saying? Like where does it stop? You know, referees that they're human, they make mistakes, they come in a very untimely period. Yeah, it did, but you know it's part of the game, man. You gotta keep it moving. You got there right, bro. You got there right. Let's look at the game, bro. It's gonna be a game of running the football because the Pats, you know, they ran the ball in Kansas City and the Chargers. They come to the game with something with Shell, Burkhead, and James White out of the backfield, catching no pretty much long handoffs, which is a little short, short little dinky duck passes that Brady's throwing. So I think Todd Gurley, if he shows up in his old something like of Georgia, C.J. Anderson as the, the, the backing him up there, it could control the clock with that outside zone. The Rams run maybe could make break the belt, hold the hoodies defense down. So. How you feeling about this matchup so far when you're looking at the Rams offense versus the Pats defense and vice versa on that one? Man, you're right, boss. You know, that's, that's going to be the key. It's going to be time of possession because, you know, the Patriots, they're going to bore you to death, you know, on offense. Like you said, with the little dink and dunk passes that Tom Brady uh, uh, does there. He throws uh, you know, Sonny Michelle, James White. You know, they're going to be huge factors in the game as well, man. So, and that's what, that's what the Patriots do better than anybody, man, especially with two weeks to prepare. They're going to just scheme the Rams to death. You know what I'm saying? Whatever the Rams are weak is at, the Patriots are going to find a way to exploit that. And like I said, the Rams, they, you have to, in order to beat the Patriots, and, you know, this is the law now when it comes to Super Bowl victories or Super Bowl defeats for the Patriots, it's the fact that if a team can put pressure, if a defense can put pressure on Tom Brady, if your front four can somehow get pressure on Tom Brady and interrupt his his pattern interrupt his timing. That's the only way that you have a chance to beat the Patriots, man. You gotta be able to put pressure on them. And you would think with Indominus and Sue and 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 uh, Aaron, Aaron Donald, you know, uh, guys of that nature on the defensive line for the Rams, that they should be able to get some type of pressure on Tom Brady because if he's allowed to sit back there and you know dink and dunk and throw his little you know slants and you know stop to uh, uh, Gronkowski and Elliman. Like, it's going to be a long day for the Rams, man. Like I said, go take time possession. 
And also, you got to be able to put pressure on uh, on Tom Brady if you want to have a chance to, to beat him. Get up there, right? Hit him up the middle with Brockers, Fowler, yeah. and Sue, and Donald running them TE stunts, them tight, the end tackle stunts there, and hopefully covering them with seven men, but not going to what the Chiefs did, that two man under, that, that the Chiefs are staying that two man under, and Brady ate alive. You got to mix it up between cover two, for real cover two, and two man, not just two man every time. But if the Chiefs didn't line up off sides like like clowns, yeah, it would been game, well, game over, right? right. Exactly. So, yeah, so, bro, you know what I mean, personally, because, you know, I'm in Atlanta now, so I'm so I moved to. The Patriots are not wanted here, so I'm going to stick with the city. I'm going to turn on, turn on. I'm going to go with the Rams because I got to keep everybody happy inside because <laughs> that's what they want to win. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah, you know. You know, Rams, Rams, I'm not sorry, Saints and Falcons fans, you know, they, they don't really see eye to eye, man. So, you, you know, you got to be a Rams fan this weekend. <laughs> yes, indeed. So, you know, we got that going. And in the NBA, bro, news is breaking. And Anthony Davis wants to trade out of New Orleans like we know it was someone coming. But he has Adrian Rich Paul going to record to Woj. And Davis got to find $1,000 because of Paul going to Woj. So, Trying to force his way out to LSU and get that full supermax from the Lakers. He he does not want to lose that, that lose that money from having to sign there as a free agent. So, what are your thoughts on the whole Rich Paul that Davis Pelicans Lakers dynamic? And should the Pelicans hold on firm and wait to get that Boston offer and have that Boston try to pull the Paul George and Kawhi and give them a year to convince them to stay? Man, this is one of those things, man, where you know you really can't find fault with either party. You know. You understand uh, Rich Paul and uh, Anthony Davis' position of what they're trying to do and, and you know, trying to force a way to L.A. And, and still be able to keep that uh, Supermax deal. And then if you're the Pelicans, you know, uh, Dale Dempsey and, and company, the general manager, you're well within your right to sit and, and not do anything. Because, you know, right now, if you're looking at as far as an entertaining package for Anthony Davis, you would – has to think that Boston will be able to offer more than LA can right now, you know, with the the number of picks that Boston has and the young talent that they have on that end, like you're gonna start over. Like I would rather take that deal from Boston anyway. You know, and and the Boston, you know, wanna take a chance with Anthony Davis, you know, not re signing. But yet but a lot of people think that if he does go to Boston and Kyrie is still there, him and Kyrie are good friends, they'll somehow make that make that work, man. But Magic and, and the Lakers are on the clock, man. They have to find a way to get this done. And if you are the Lakers, you got to throw in the kitchen sink, man. I'm I'm offering everybody <laughs> except Cal <Kyle> Kuzma. <laughs> like, y'all can have everybody else except Kuzma. And, and I'll give you maybe a uh, first-round pick this year, next year, maybe a second-round pick in 2021. But you got to make it happen, man, because Magic, you know, he promised, you know, Bring the Lakers back to, to glory, man. And, like, this is the only way to do it is to pair LeBron up with another superstar, man. So it's going to be very interesting to see what happens going forward. And I feel like if they miss out on, on Anthony Davis, they might get anybody because yeah. you know, nobody's talking about going to L.A. Yeah. I mean, Paul George didn't go there because yeah. LeBron was there. Yeah. And you know, Durant so does not, not want to go there because, so because – Yeah. So, it's so like – I mean, come on. So, uh, this is Magic Johnson's chance. So he gonna, if he strikes out, him and Plinko might need to be fired. Man, they're trying to fire it's, Luke Walton. They fire themselves. It's, it's Anthony Davis a bust, really, uh, for the Lakers at this point. It really is. And you, who would have thought people would be running away from the Lakers because of that LeBron James? When you go to him, you're diminished. And I don't believe Kyrie wants to go back out to L.A. I think Kyrie just throwing stuff out there because that's what Kyrie does. Yeah, and then, but like I said, you know, a Hollywood story, a Hollywood script. You know, could you imagine a team with LeBron, Kyrie, Anthony Davis, though? I could imagine it, but I don't think it ever happened. Uh, it, it's, it's like a small thing that could really happen. I don't see it really going down. Because Kyrie wanted to leave so bad to get his own team and become his own man. And he don't go back to the man who you want to get away from so you, you can be your own man. Makes no sense to yeah, me. Yeah, makes no sense. You know, he's been talking about, you know, how much he appreciates you know, what LeBron was trying to do for him and – you just never know, man. You just never know how these things play out, man. You really don't. You get there, right? And, bruh, since last time we talked to you, 
the Grizzlies actually finally followed our advice for years. Oh, my God. They're going to put Mike Conley and Gasol on the trade block, but years too late. So how are the fans in Memphis reacting to the fact that Mike Conley and Mark Gasol may be gone? I think they will because their contracts are so, are so bad. They won't be going anywhere. But in the, the prospect of them going, how are the fans in Memphis receiving that right now? Man, you know what? I think the consensus amongst all Grizz fans, they're realizing now that uh, we may have waited too long uh, as far as trying to move Gasol, and, and especially especially Gasol, not so much Conley. I think the fans would be okay with Conley sticking around maybe another year, but I think they realize now that Gasol should have been gone at least two years ago. You know, when you could have really got max, uh, you know, uh, max return for, uh, for Mark Gall, man. And, you know, reports are that Portland is really pursuing uh, pursuing uh, Mark Gasol tough right now. They're trying to put together a package to get uh, to get Mark, thinking they have a chance to uh, contend in the uh, in the West with uh, Marcus Stoll up there in Portland, man. So I think you know in the next couple of weeks, man, I I, I can see a deal happening, uh, but definitely before the deadline uh, or, or maybe uh, off season, man. But especially before the deadline, man. See Gasol, Gasol go somewhere, man. Maybe Portland. You know they could use them, man. Some other teams out there they could uh, they definitely have some interest in them, but. You know, it's been it's been something that's been in the making for a while now. We talked about it for a long time, like you said, boss, and it was a year or two too late. But uh, you, know, you got to do what's necessary now. And now, I know I feel bad for his bigger staff. Like he gets the yeah. job, he's only got a three year contract. Yeah, he's re- he's piling up losses on his record. Right. You know how the Grizz front office is so fickle. They gotta fire him. Like it's his, like it's his fault. Exactly. You know how it goes, man. And it's really Chris Watson's fault. As always. As always. <laughs> as always, man. And hey, Chris Wallace will definitely be out of here, man, next year. He's out of here. I mean, you should you got to get rid of Gasol, Conley, Chris Wallace, and start over and keep Bickerstaff because he's about on the yacht going positive, build around Jaron Jackson Jr. and grow from there because right now, like you, like you said, the Grizzlies went too far with the grid and grind and it's tapped out. And, bruh, I, when I watch on Fox Sports South, look like the stands are empty. I don't know what they're in FedEx Forum now. It looks very empty. I, I felt the fans are losing interest as well, and that's not good either. Absolutely, man. Like I said, I went to the game uh, for uh, MLK Day uh, last Monday, and, man, it felt like a funeral in there, dude. It was, a, you know, a decent crowd, but it was so dead in there. There was no energy, no excitement. And that's the state of the Grizz right now, man. You know, they just, you know, feel like they're kind of just, idling, you know, uh, you know, not really being able to move forward, not able to go back, you know, just kind of stuck in the middle right now. Yes, the last one I got for you, bro. It's time for you now, bro, to throw out your people. Super Bowl weekend, the big game. So what you got planned, it, it clicks tonight to get ready for Super Bowl, get the, the primer for the big game man. on Sunday on CBS. The, pre, the pre-party going down tonight, man. You know where it is. Clicks, the number one hangout, the number one party spot in the city, man. You love karaoke, we got you. You know, if you if you love, you know, good food, good drinks, we got you. And boss, we got something new going on starting this uh tonight also, man. You know, we got uh our new talent showcase where we're giving the opportunity, giving the spotlight to all the, you know, the young high rappers out there, all the all the singers out there, you know, uh comedians, spoken word arts, like whatever you do. Whatever your talent is, man, we're giving you a chance to showcase it. You know, right at clicks each and every Saturday night. That's how we're doing it, man. Memphis got talent starting up tonight. And then, you know, the pregame, pre-party for the Super Bowl is going down tonight, too, man. Come check us out. No doubt. Check out my man, J.C. Smith in Memphis at Click Sports Bar and Beats. I don't mouth on way. Check him out, folks. It's boss. It's J.C. We out, fam. All right, folks, back on the Boss Man Show. Time to be joined by my girl, J. Monique, who's enjoying the colder weather in Florida, the Arctic Blast. It's in Georgia, so that was in Florida, too. I was at the Pro Bowl on Sunday in Orlando. The rain, and I was just miserable on the field at Camping World Stadium Sunday, Jay, because all that rain and wind and cold in Florida. Yes, it rained for like 24 hours straight, nonstop. Yeah, not to tell you want to work, work it inside with a microphone and a, and a, and a mic and an earpiece in your ear. Not fun at all when it all being wet. It's popping like, oh my God, it's like a whale or something in my ear. But.
But Jay, you got some bad takes for us today. What do you have to start us off with that I have to shake my head already? Uh, yes, the first one is United Airlines kicked off a fat shaming passenger from their flight. She said, quote, I can't sit here because they're both big, left and right. I can't even sit here. So she was ranting and raving and, com- and complaining. A woman sitting in the center seat on a United Airlines flight from Las Vegas to Newark, New Jersey, was reportedly removed from the plane after she fat shamed the passengers who was seated next to her. The incident happened before takeoff on New Year's Day, and they caught that on video as well. A video of what occurred was recorded by Norma Rogers, and it went viral just shortly afterwards. So what happened was she was talking on her cell phone and was complaining that she was stuck between Rogers and her traveling companion. Rogers then asked the flight attendant to fight to find the woman another seat, adding that she would not be verbally abused by this B or anybody else. The woman said, I can't sit here because they're both so big, left and right, I can't even sit here. The flight attendant offered the woman another seat, and as the woman stood to change seat, she decided to announce to everybody on the plane, I eat salad. Wow. That's your take? Yep, that, that was her take, and she went with it. First of all, you fat shame me. Feeling better about themselves, who's probably eating, cook out their own selves, Wendy's or something. Then you go with your takes about them being big, which is bad. Then you go, I eat salad. Yep. Ma'am, what's your deal? It's not even a take. I eat salad. What? How's it relevant to your, to your problem? You know, you if you if you have an issue, she'll book the first class flight. Uh, you should have paid more for a, a ticket. Uh, maybe get an end seat. Maybe. I don't know. Uh, there are ways around this problem. Or you can just calmly say, hey, is there an open seat I can go to? Because, you know, they're kind of heavy. And I can just do it in a subtle, calm way. Not this whole, oh, they're fat as hell. I can't breathe. It's squeezing me. I eat salad, say. Come yeah, her, she was so unnecessary what she did, and I agree with you. Like, she could have just been more discreet about it and just, you know, uh, pulled the flight attendant to the side like, hey, you know, can you find another seat for me, you know, that's a little bit more comfortable? She didn't even have to say, oh, they're fat and all this other stuff. She could have just said, you know, I'm a little uncomfortable there and without even making a scene. It's always how you say it. It's not what you say. It's how you say it. That's what it's always about. Yep. The delivery of that message could have been that we would have made our our segment. She was as calm about it. This is my take, Jay. You know, it. Now I can't say this for men, but it was at a certain point, most women will be fat because they're pregnant at some point. So if she had she not have kids or something because she was pregnant and big and and her third trimester she was kind of fat to a degree. That shame her for being ready and being on her drivers. No. Don't hurt this couple who like to eat more, more, more than you and I do. Let them be. Just right. Slide to the side, calmly, discreetly. Live to fight another day and live to get to Newark, New Jersey, to the bricks in Newark, New Jersey. On NJ Trans, the five train out there. The bricks. <laughs> it, it's not shocking. She's from power Newark. It's not shocking. That, that's what she, you know what she needs to do? Jump in the in, in that Hudson River and leave it alone. Call it a day. <laughs> so you yeah, don't doubt. What you got else for us, Jay? A South Carolina man allegedly faked his own kidnapping to scam his mother out of, guess how much? $130. And he told her that he would be killed if she didn't get it. So this 19-year-old South Carolina te- uh, teenager, he was accused of faking his own kidnapping in an attempt to extort his mother out of just over $130. His name is Emmanuel Franklin, and he was arrested for blackmail on Thursday last week after attempting to carry out the scheme two days prior. 
An arrest warrant released this week alleged the suspect had caused his mother to believe he would be killed by the kidnappers if she did not provide the cash demanded from her. The mother, who was not named by the sheriff's office, told deputies she was contacted by a private cell phone number. On the call, she heard her son in an unknown voice who said $130 would have to be placed in a mailbox on Bagnell Drive or her son's life would be at risk. Suspicions were raised after she recognized that the mailbox address belonged to the residence of Franklin's father. I mean, really? So then Franklin wow. later admitted that he had fabricated the tale to get $130 from his mother. So he admitted to this take, like, yes, he did it, to get $130 from his mother. It was not yet explained why the teenager had needed the money. And also remaining unclear was the identity of the second individual on the cell phone call. So you just couldn't ask her, ask her for, for, for that 130 though, Frank? You couldn't do that, Frank? 130 from your mama or your daddy? I mean, what is the so pressing that you need? Either a video game, a new pair of jeans, a hat, a sweater? I, I mean, if you're gonna scam, go big and scam. You know, I mean, really. Big. You don't scam. You don't scam. Go big. I mean, that's my thing. And I, this is my first take about this. This is my first thoughts. How do you fake a kidnapping? That's how do you do that? And why? Again. Like this elaborate non-good scheme <laughs> for one thirty. I think that's the thing that got me the most. Not only did he, you know, try to scheme his his poor mother, you know, the, the person who gave birth to him, but the fact that he tried to scheme her out of just $130. I mean, he could have just literally either asked for the money, number one, or two, work for it. Like, he could have earned that in, like, one or two days of working eight-hour shifts. Yeah, go to the temp service. Yeah. Yeah. hours you know you always want to get 130 fast but to go to I mean for, for 130 I thought you'd be like $130,000 maybe I mean maybe I get that I don't agree with it but I can get that but for 130 yeah $130 I mean you can host that from, from the barber shop where your friends are I mean 130 is easy to pull off. Yep. Now, I can't. Oh my, come on, man. This is pathetic. I mean, and, and he, I know he's African American, unfortunately. Which makes it even worse. Yes, he is. That's what makes it worse. He's African American. I don't understand. I don't get it. I never will get it, actually. I'll be. Mean, there, there are certain takes I'm never going to understand. That's one of them. Like, uh, uh, I'm not gonna get that. I'm, like, I'm just not gonna get that take. And I have another bad take, a bonus bad take. There was a Florida man that found a old World War II grenade while fishing. He was outside of a Taco Bell. He found a World War II grenade. Yes. Outside of a Taco Bell. Found it while fishing. Ah. And he went to Taco Bell and left it out front, front of Taco Bell. He's so stupid. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Let me just go ahead and place this grenade here. <laughs> A public place where, yeah. you know, people and families and children are walking in and out of every day. Hmm. Exactly. Like, now look. I know Taco Bell causes grenades to come out of your rear end for most people. I know it does me. If you eat a, a Taco Bell meal, it's going to come out of you in about two hours the wrong way. I mean, maybe he's trying to simulate that for us the grenade who knows. But first of all, how do you find a, if you find a grenade while fishing, why, why are you putting it in your car or boat to take it with you? Exactly. A catch and release thing, right? Catch, oh, oh no, release that catch and release, please. Not only do you catch it, you transport it with your fish to the back of your truck and you 
take it out of the truck, put it at Taco Bell's. Come on, Taco Bell. A live World War II grenade. Yeah, that's what I don't get. Oh, it's like I wouldn't be transporting anything like that with me. It's like once he saw it, he should have just left it alone. Like, oh, grenade, you know, and just leave, leave it alone. And he transports uh, it with him and then decides to leave it at a, at a very public place. I don't know who at Taco Bell pissed him off. Yeah, I saw somebody that might made that man mad. He going to kick him out there for, for retribution on, his own, on somebody at Taco Bell. Now, like, dude, for real. Maybe the guy from there or somebody got his order wrong at some point. Exactly. Not that that justifies putting a grenade it's, there. That's that's just overdrive right there. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> And Jay, our three stories tonight on the Boss Report. I mean, the man takes all. It could be all of it. The same day, I don't give a shit. It could be all of it. <laughs> Bad takes be guy even worse takes. <laughs> they sure did. They sure did. We thought the one from it last never week fails. Was <laughs> <laughs> It's like it never fails. The same never fails. Bad takes be even worse takes. We start off with fat shaming, move to a one thirty scheme, into a guy going with a grenade, Taco Bell, and never that ends. got worse. <laughs> if I'm not mistaken, that got worse. Yeah, it got worse from level to level. <laughs> so the same lives true again, folks. On the bad takes segment, bad takes. Be get even worse takes. And that's what happens on the bad example with Jay Monique and the Boss Man. And check us out at bossmanshow.com. New site. Catch us everywhere on bossmanshow.com. Uh, we're on Audio Boom and Anchor. We may be on another streaming service real soon. Allegedly. Probably. I don't want to jinx it. Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> you know, so <laughs> it's coming soon. So, folks, they stay with us on the Boss Man Show. We got more show for after break. We got two boss reports for you after bad takes. They can stay with us on the Boss Man Show. All right, folks, back on the Boss Man Show. Time for the Boss Report with Jay Monique. Jay, I know last week's stories was crazy. Uh, that fish story with the smell like vagina, my man raping the fish. We got emails upon emails about that story, Jay. And to me... That might be one of the worst stories I've ever heard in my life. Yeah, that was crazy. <laughs> Once again, I'm going to put this PSA out there, people. Uh, a vagina should not smell like a fish. A catfish should not smell like that. If it does, you should run. Just saying. <laughs> you should run from that. So, folks, you've been waiting on it. It's time for it. It's here. Foss support. First story is this, Jay. Hold up. Wait a minute. Meek Mill was spotted with a guys to be glued goddess despite the history of adhesive hairline when it comes to his women. Okay, say that again. What, yes. what happened with Meek Mill? Oh, okay. Meek Mill was spotted with a guys to be glued goddess despite his history of adhesive Carolina version in his women. So she, he had a sew in Blue Queen. He don't like that, allegedly. <laughs> so he had he had a, a sew in Blue Queen? Yeah. He's on record. He don't like sew ins or adhesive hair. But yeah, he had one. Yeah. How are these hypocrites in this industry? I'm telling you. I know, right? Come on. I, that's all I have to say about that. I feel it's hypocritical and contradictory. I agree with you. I'm right there with you. And, uh, get this. Go on a woman's arrested. I'm stripping down naked. Dancing in the Waffle House parking lot because the meal was so good. And she tickled her fancy. I don't know what that means. Oh, I think I know what it tickled her fancy <laughs> means by this point. <laughs> Hold up. 
I tried Waffle House before. They are all right, but they're not that good. No offense. <laughs> and even if the food was amazing, how does one come to the point where they strip off all their clothes and decide to dance in the parking lot because the food was that good? Just say the food was good and go about your business like what normal people do. What to make her get like that? I don't know if it was that loud or what's going on because... <laughs> Yeah. I've never heard of that. Like, I mean, that food must have been beyond amazing and delicious for her to turn around and do that. And she was a bigger woman. And a lot oh, of God. jelly and rolling in that parking lot, I must say. Yeah, she wasn't dancing. She was rolling. I was like, uh, man, oh, man. I shook my head in the video when I saw it. And it threw me off. And we got this story. On your head, Dream Doll replies to crusty, uncouth, kiss and tell lady in Tory Lanes says, "Quote: He ate her ass and sucked her feet through her socks." What in the hell? What? <laughs> and then on top of that, why does he feel the need to tell the whole world this? Exactly. I don't like when people do that. If you do whatever happens in the bedroom should stay in the bedroom, regardless of any type of falling out. That should never leak out to the public. That's your business. And it goes to show what type of mindset he has. Don't mess with Tory Lane. She'll put you out there. Exactly. But some desperate doc will get with him just hoping he'll put her on. Yep. Oh, we kissing and tell dudes they are not what it is. And this story is right here, Jay. It reminds us of our, our man's up line. Listen to this. Catch it, catch it right here. Florida man pays someone else 27 cents so that he can have $420 in his bank account. What? <laughs> so he paid somebody else 27 cents so he could have $420 in his bank account? Correct. So what does the person receiving the 27 cents get out of it? Exactly. <laughs> like, that already don't even sound right. The person was that willing and stupid to just accept 27 cents from him to trade $420 Correct. with him. What kind of trade-off is this? That is, some, that is a pathetic take. Somebody who can't do math. Yeah. Like, what was the 27 cents, like, interest or something? Is this a loan that this guy has to pay back on top of the 27 cents? Oh, my God. I have no what is going on here? That story is terrible as well. <laughs> terrible story. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, God, it's terrible. We got this story. Vacation gone bad. Black China and her filthy flavor of the week have a physical fallout at Hawaii Resort, and the 5 responds promptly. Last time is, uh, like, for some reason, she's always ending up fighting or squabbling with somebody. She just cannot stay out of drama. She kind of reminds me of Tommy from, from Love and Hip Hop. Exactly. Like, just calm down. Exactly. Calm the, calm the bleep down, Black Channel. Enjoy your Kardashian man. Meet you got over there. Chill out. Exactly. It is a Florida crazies. Unhinged husband arrested and charged for mushing wife's head in the face with a burrito. I should refuse to top it off. (laughs) 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 Terrible. Yeah, what a way to get back at somebody, right? Hey, you ain't gonna top me off no on your face. face. <laughs> <laughs> because she went top him off. That's what got her to build the face. My lord. Wow. <laughs> so let me get this straight. <laughs> So this must this burrito incident, it must have happened after. It seems like Homeboy was holding a grudge against her from yeah. maybe like maybe a night before. So he decided to set her down for what should have been a casual burrito dinner. <laughs> hey, he <laughs> and he decided to put her in the face with it. Yes. <laughs> he knew what he was doing. He set her up for the L. Yes he did. Yes, this Florida guy did. He's gonna be Sound for it, allegedly, with simple 
assault charge right now. Boy, boy, boy. Like, how does one go to court for smashing somebody's face with a burrito? Like, how does that even sound when the judge is reading that off? That's what I'm wondering right now. Uh, we have a case between the state of Florida versus Florida man who you're here because you won't mush your wife in the face with a burrito because she wouldn't top you off. Is that correct, sir? <laughs> yes, you are. Uh, you, how, how, how do you plead, sir? Guilty. What should I send you to? Kitchen work. Done. How can you prosecute that case? That's like, how do you prosecute that? Yeah, like, how does this work? And then how embarrassing is that? It's not like, okay, he's going to be the only one in the courtroom with his lawyer and the judge and, and the state attorney's office. No, you have other defendants in the courtroom as well. They don't talk about him like a dog. Man, dude, really? I wish you can get, get, get your sips topped off. I mean... I, I get that will upset you. I, 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 I get that. I, I'm, I'm with you. You know, get me upset. I'm not going to throw a point on somebody's face. <laughs> I, I might just want to hold my own offering. Oh, is that right? Okay. No, okay. You want to get, get none of this thing, okay? So, right, yeah, that's the normal way to do it. So, if she refuses your offering, your request, refuse her request so we can come to a, have a meeting here. Okay. I'm not getting right. what I want. You ain't getting what I want, so we need to come together about this. He didn't even leave the table open for negotiations. Like, it was just, okay, she refused, so he turned around set her up and mushed her in the face with the burrito the next day. And they said he used Like, he knew he was going to mush her in the face, like, before an e- before he, they even sat down to eat burritos. He knew he wanted to mush her in the face with the burrito. And she said he used That's the plate to put in her face. He used the plate. He took it off the plate. The plate in her face. Plate to her face. Really? Now, I mean, he, he went plate to face. Even worse. Wow. All because he wanted some sloppy toppy. He ain't getting it now. He sure is. He not. Sure as heck not. And speaking of sloppy toppy, uh, Bill Cosby, of all people, was reportedly targeted by a drone hovering over the Pennsylvania prison yard. I wonder what a drone would want with him, like maybe to see what he's doing, like what life is like for him in prison. Are they really that nosy? My man is getting walked around with a walker. He's not living his best life. No, he's not. He's miserable. He wants to go home as with anybody else. You know? So they decide to make his life even more miserable by spying on him. Exactly. Terrible. Terrible, terrible, terrible. Then we got this. Florida woman arrested after spanking other other parents' kids with a wooden belt of what's in a wooden spoon at a wild sleepover where she gave some of the kids a sex lesson. What? Yes. Okay, hold up. That lesson shouldn't even be spoken of, especially without the parents, like, you know what I mean? Like, knowledge or consent. Because I'm quite sure the parents know about it. Jay, a live lesson. Oh, oh, heck no. (laughs) Even worse. This is worse. This is sick. (laughs) Yeah. And then the wooden spoon part is like, Okay, so back in the day, that used to be actually like a common form of discipline was like the wooden spoon. They even did that in the schools, actually. Some of the like the private schools and the Catholic schools and stuff like that, they would use like the wooden spoons as part of discipline. But they wouldn't like literally like whack them around with it. You know, kind of like you stick your hand out, you know, they, they whack you with it. Since she had young boys giving her a toothpick treat. Oh no, she should just get thrown under the jail. Not in the jail, under it. Yeah, she's doing the most. That's that's sick. That's disgusting. Yes indeed. Got this story, which is amazing to me, but I'm not shocked by it. Former NFL star Clinton Porter says he took shots of Hennessy and rum before a game to dead in the pain. I would think that a lot of them do that. Don't a lot of them drink Hennessy and rum and stuff like that? Yeah, but not before the games, though. He's out there playing in the field drunk. 
Yeah, that that that's pretty messy. That's pretty messy. That that's not cool at all. Because then that that throws you off your game right there. You don't know what you're doing. Yeah, I don't I don't want my players to feel drunk. Only I wouldn't either. I get you in pain, but come on, dude, really? So you that drunk so you don't feel the pain? I got you. I got you. Let's do this ball support is this tonight, and this ball support here is this. Florida woman and husband prepping for fall of U.S. government accused of swindling $5 billion from the tobacco company of choice. Newport. So how do they, like, swindle this money exactly? Set up a fake business account for them. To, they, they were distributors or trying to get, get product. They hacked into the main system and took the money. But they, Dang. The IP address is still... Your IP address does not change. They know where you use that fools. They're yeah, that's so why, dumb. That's why you do it at the library. If you want to act the fool, use the library IP address. The library. Right. Nobody knows... Who, it, it can be anybody at the library. Exactly. Like, that was dumb. Very. And then they really thought they were going to get away with it, too. Like fools. Like fools. So, folks, that's the most important part one. We got a part two for you after the break. BossmanShow.com, Boston Radio Network, Boston J, and Boston Support Part two. Up next for you after the break. All right, folks, back in the Boss Man Show, Boss Report Part 2. Jay Wiz heard Part 1. I can see off the air, man. These stories are out of control, Jay. I don't know what's going on in our world today. Yeah, these people are so out of control. Out of there. Like, they are all the way late. Man, so. They, we're going to talk about them some more. We got Part 2, folks, so you've been waiting on it. It's time for it. It's here. It's Boss Report. <laughs> All right, Jay, first story on part two is this. Dog stealing Florida man. Rest for witness tampering by pumping some juice into the woman whose dog he stole in the first place. Wait, so the dog, what happened with the dog? Who stole the dog? The, the, the man. And he's arrested for tampering with this because he, uh, been having sex with the woman's dogs he stole from the drop case. That is disgusting. How does one bring themselves to not only steal animals, but to engage in certain encounters with them? It's like there's just way too many humans on the planet. First yeah. the fish story from last week, and now <laughs> somebody's dog? Yeah, I don't understand that either. I'm like, why are we doing that is sick. He needs to get thrown under the jail, too. Yes, indeed. We got this. Snow so special. Jeannie May responds to rumors that her and Young Jeezy are together. He's blowing her backs to some of the rings. So she's confirming that her and Jeezy are, in fact, together and that he's good in the whatever they're doing. Yes, she's confirming the stolen. Hey, yeah, Trump or die. <laughs> He's popping off. Honestly, if, if that, first of all, what happened with Jeannie and her, and her, and her husband? I thought she was married to some producer of The Real. I thought so too. That's where I'm caught off guard with this. I'm like, hold up, wait a minute. Then on top of that, Jeannie and Young Jeezy, how is that even a match made in heaven? I know, right? Hey. <laughs> hey and Jeezy. Yeah. What? And she confirmed it. This is for real. Oh my gosh. Who was that guy that uh, Tony Braxton was with? Birdman. Bird that's about as opposite as, as Tony Braxton and Birdman right now. This is what it looks like. Yeah. And do that guy on his face. Like Tyson. Pathetic. Oh, good gracious. This next story going to throw you off, too. Florida man team sets mom on fire with a, uh, a cocktail 
touch it with a baseball bat and sticks a the bat up her boyfriend's ass. Whoa! That sounds like some something set up on one of those Home Alone movies. Yeah, that's what I threw me off. Like, what? Like, he really put a lot of thought and effort behind this. And they said it on mother. I was like, what's with these dudes and their mothers? Like, like these people birthed them out. They're and he decided to set his own mother on fire? Like, hey, what's she do to make a mess? Exactly, these dudes are tripping. Man. And obviously, he had a beef with her boyfriend, too. Yeah, I'm going to bet up somebody's record. That's a little bit out of Yeah, that does a lot. That's like, okay, dude, like, <laughs> get out. Like, <laughs> yeah. Wow. We got this in his reusable, recyclable bag. Actor Jeffrey Owens stunts on deplorable W2 list Dusties at SAG Awards feels redemption after Trader Joe's shaming from last year. Okay, so what did he do again? Remember that actor Jeffrey Owens from the college show that got shamed from being at working at that grocery store? Uh, oh, know, yeah. At the, at the SAG Awards, talking about how, hey, redemption was great. You know, he took work while he was not getting any gigs. So I don't you know, see like, anything wrong with that. Everybody's got to do what they got to do. What is he going to do? Sit there and, and starve and not pay his bills? I mean, actually, um, there's a lot of actors, actually, who, you know, if they can't get gigs, they do something else on the side until they can get regular work. I don't exactly. judge or not nobody for that. Exactly. So, folks, tripping as usual. And we got this Florida man pulls gun on driver on I-4 and tried to pass it. You know what? It is not that serious. How does one go from being on the road to somebody trying to pass them, cut them off or whatever, to that person pulling a gun on them? It's not that serious. And it's I-4. I-4 is one of the busiest highways in Orlando or Central Florida, period. I-4 stays busy. So it's going to be like that. People are going to try to pass you or cut you off, but it shouldn't come to the point where somebody's pulling a gun or engaging in any act of violence. It is not that serious. Calm down. Thank you, my Lord. Jesus, that's, just, that's overkill. I mean, it is. You know how many times people cut me off per day? <laughs> no, I put a rap on you. Here you go. Four, the AK's ready for you, like, for real? Why you have an AK in your car? And it was an AK, too. My gosh. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Jeez. I know, right? We got this. Knowledge is powerful. Retired Michigan couple finesses $26 million off the Michigan lottery by cracking the code illegally. What? Yeah. Say what? The The hustle is real. I don't get the lottery and how they know numbers come out. I don't know how you crack the code. I don't get that. Yeah, I'm, I'm confused. I thought it was something that was just random. I didn't know that there was like some type of code figure out what the next numbers were gonna be. Terrible. I, I don't get it. That story is perplexed me. I'm not a gambler, yeah. so I don't really know how to play the lottery that good. I'm power up. I still give me whatever comes out of the end of the damn machine. And I don't know the, the, the methods of what number gonna fall. I don't get that crap, so. Yeah, me too. Crack- it's like, I just do quick pay. If I'm gonna crack the code, they must be good at it. I mean, man. Crazy. We got this story. Florida man arrested after attempting to barbecue child molesters in his community. He was arrested for trying to barbecue the child molesters? Mm-hmm. I don't see what he did wrong. Exactly. <laughs> I mean, seriously, they were child molesters. I could see if it was he was trying to barbecue you know, innocent people or something, but they're child molesters. Except that they deserve what they deserve. So then they made the child molesters have to be the victims, and now this guy is sitting in jail now. Exactly. It more seemed like he was trying to protect his community. That's what it more seemed like. Now, the way how he went about it, eh, but, you know, I, I get it. You know what I mean? I get it. I wouldn't do it, but I get it. 
Yeah, he went by trying to blowtorch any and every child molester sex offender in the area. Get a blowtorch. A live one. Dang. Oh, he meant it. <laughs> he was not playing at all. A vigilante, but he ain't in jail for it now. Yeah, honestly, I don't think he should have been arrested. That's just my personal opinion. I really don't think he deserves to be in jail for that. I'm with you. I think he did nothing wrong, but in the eyes of the Civil County Sheriff Department, he did something wrong. Of course, Florida. Yes, indeed. We got Hold the Mayo. Michael B. Jordan spotted at Film Festival flirting with a brown skin banger, Kiki Lane, after his known love of the swirl. Okay, so it looks like he's switching up now and switching races. Yeah, he looks like he's trying to get 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 it right and get it tight with the color. <laughs> he getting back with the sisters. Ain't nothing wrong with that. Yeah, hopefully he gets it together, but we know he can always go back to the side any given time. Yeah, I guess it depends on how the relationship, you know, works out and everything and and what's really going to determine it is when they get into their argument yeah cause Beckys don't argue the way her sisters argue yeah that's what's been known is that you know the sisters allegedly argue more than the Beckys and the, the Beckys are more submissive uh, that takes that much true now <laughs> 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 I go re- I've never been with a Becky. I'm scared of him. But <laughs> based on takes I know firsthand, Jay's take is true. <laughs> <laughs> I fear Becky's for various reasons. So I don't mess with him. But hey, Mo Power to Michael B. Jordan who's decided to come back to, to the bright side for a say. So we have a Florida man, Jay. Who causes a hundred thousand dollars of damage to a Walmart liquor store? Not Walmart, but a Walmart liquor store under construction with a hot wire forklift he stole from Home Depot. Gives the police the name of Alice Wonderland and says a hooker smoking caterpillar told him to do it. This is why he stole a forklift. From Home Depot and caused all the damage to Walmart liquor stores because a caterpillar from Alice in Wonderland told him to do it. Correct. And he went with this take and meant this. <laughs> yes, he did. <laughs> and expected them to believe this. Yes, they. Yes, he did. <laughs> first of all, Alice in Wonderland is not real. This is a very fictional story that's been around for years. Nobody from Alice in Wonderland is going to come and tell anybody anything. And they're certainly not going to tell you to steal a forklift from Home Depot and then... <laughs> what did he do with the forklift? He crashed it into this liquor store to cause all the damage? Yes. Yes. <laughs> the liquor store under construction. He crashed it into... He stole from Home Depot. Really? Did he at least get some liquor before he got arrested? I mean... No, but he said he was wearing a worn condom. That's what he says. He had a worn condom. Oh, this story that. just keeps getting worse. He, <laughs> he had, had a like worn that. condom on. So this man's walking around with a used condom on. <laughs> Does that mean that he used it on himself? Or he had a, a quote, worn condom. I've never heard it before. A quote, worn condom. Yeah, that's what I don't get, but I'm assuming that he used it on himself. <laughs> that he was doing things. Oh, okay, if I'm getting okay, when I'm having my condoms, I'm taking it off and I'm done. Why would I keep it on? This is this is the same guy who said a caterpillar from Alice in Wonderland told him to steal this forklift from Home Depot. Oh God! See, so his way of thinking and our normal way of thinking are two different ways of thinking. And why was you driving a forklift down the street? <laughs> <laughs> I 
I'm wondering what his mission was. Like, even if this, even if he heard voices in his head telling him do do something, like, what was the overall mission? Like, what was the end game to do this? Like, what was the benefit, and who was supposed to be benefiting? I have man. This is one of the worst stories I heard as well. I don't understand this. <laughs> I don't understand it either. I'm confused. There are two layers in this story. Too many layers. Did yeah, too many. He's got on a worn condom. He's stealing forklifts <laughs> from Home, Home Depot because a caterpillar from Alice in Wonderland told him to do so. And then he proceeds to crash into a Walmart liquor store. Yeah, man. First, okay, Jay, maybe I'm out of touch. I know Walmart, Walmart had a liquor store. I wasn't aware of it either. Maybe it's something new or or whatever. Now, I do know that they have the Walmart neighborhood market, which they've had around for quite a few years, but they don't have it in every city. Yeah, I, I wasn't aware of Walmart liquor stores until this story. That's why I'm perplexed. Cause I'm I didn't know either. I'm like, Walmart liquor store? What? <laughs> so it's a great value wine in there. Or any great bottle of Tennessee. You know what? <laughs> this is wrong on so many levels. I'm not about to buy a bottle of Equate Hennessy. It is the real deal or no deal. I'm about to get some great value hypnotic. <laughs> <laughs> like, you know, Walmart's going to throw in their brand along with the, like, uh, real brand. Like, no, I'm not still not, not going to buy your brand. Like, no. Yeah, it doesn't drive well. I don't, I'm, I'm averse to uh, great va- great values tequila mix. I'm good on that. And you already don't like Walmart as it is. Yeah, so I see a liquor store in Georgia. I'm gonna, I'm gonna take a picture of it and shame it off the AP. If, when I go see it and see any quick bottle of wine, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna lose it. I know you will. You'll be like, what? <laughs> I might walk right out. I'm like, I'm, I'm finished. I'm done for today. Have a, I'm finished. <laughs> <laughs> no more shopping for me today. <laughs> I'm going how about Great Value Vodka? That's that's pretty oh, bad. Oh hell no! Like yeah, it's like it's like the, that's like some TW sandals almost. The bottom of the bottom. Well, two to two eleven still reserved. Terrible. So this report again is out of control. Jay, I think through tonight's segments on the show, today's segments, it's shown that the, what I said in bad takes is true. Bad takes, but yeah, it works takes through the boss report, through the boss report part two, the takes got worse. Yep, they did. So, I mean, the saying is so true, people. Bad takes, but it works takes through the boss report. So, folks, check us out. Bossmanshow.com. It's Jay and I bringing you bad Every week in Boston Man Show. Have a great week. Enjoy some bowl Sunday. We are out. And if you don't know, now you know, you know.